morning. Well, today is April, you know what? I'm gonna say it's the 25th or 26th. I think it's the 26th today, um, but you know what? Don't quote me on that. Anyhow, we have got an exciting morning planned. About, oh, I'm gonna say two weeks ago, on a bike ride up in the La Fontaine Peninsula of, of Ontario, about, oh, maybe 45 minutes drive from where I live, I was on a bike ride and I went past a little area that had an absolutely beautiful little island sat out in the lake. And then it was only maybe 20, 30 minutes later along the bike ride, I went past another area that had a second island out on the lake. And they both looked absolutely stunning. What an amazing location. So close to where I live and yet I had no idea they were there. So today, it's a beautiful, beautiful morning. It's crisp, it's frosty. The temperature right now is showing minus two degrees Celsius. Uh, that's according to the thermometer uh, on my computer in the car. Um, it's bright, it's calm. I did try to do this video about a week ago, by the way, and it just didn't work out. The conditions were horrendous, gale force winds. Um, which I still tried to do because I thought the images could be exciting um, with the kind of angry crashing waters, but it just did not work out. Uh, far too difficult and the images for what I wanted to show, it just wasn't working for me. So I thought, you know what? Calm conditions might be the key. And today we have beautiful calm conditions. So hey, Gary here, Gary Klein Photography. We're heading north, we're heading up the La Fontaine Peninsula. Uh, we're in the car. You know, it's gonna be really, really, really interesting, or at least I think so. So the first location we're going to shoot is one of the two islands. Now, because of the actual location of the islands and where we can position ourselves on the beach, um, that depends on which one we're going to shoot first in relationship also to the sun as it rises behind the island. Um, so there's a few things there to keep in mind as we, or to plan I should say, as we kind of reach our destination. And secondly, um, another, or maybe thirdly, another location that I also noticed on that same bike ride was a woodland scene. Now, you'll know if you watch some of my videos, and I hope you do, that I really, really, really do enjoy some woodland scenes. And this was even further north another 20 kilometers further north along that bike ride when I came across an absolutely beautiful forest with some glacial kind of boulders and rocks embedded within that forest and they looked absolutely amazing and I thought you know what I've just got to get back here with camera camera gear uh, tripod and so on and I've got to see if I can create an image um, of what I was seeing because it really was beautiful hence these are the things we're doing today are we going to do all this on one shoot? I don't know, um, but I'd like to if I can. Um, so hey, let's get going. Let's just see what the day brings. It promises to be interesting. I am about 30 to 45 minutes behind schedule. I did want to be uh, at the location uh, earlier, uh, but that just didn't work out. Um, but we'll make the best of what we've got today. Hey, let's get going. capture today. I'm thinking about the composition. How do I want the image to look? How do I want the image to feel? Is there a story I'm trying to tell? Or is it just going to be a basic snapshot uh, of an island in a lake? You know what? 
I truly don't know yet. However, um, I do like to have some kind of story in my photography. So what could a story be about an island in a lake? Well, uh, first of all, um, the conditions we have are very close to the conditions that I was looking for. The water, super, super calm this morning. Um, as I mentioned a little earlier, I'm a little bit behind schedule. 45 minutes to an hour earlier than now would be absolutely perfect. But as I mentioned, it just did not happen. Um, I got tied up with something else earlier and you know what? The day just started before I was ready for it to start. Uh, so the sun's, you know, we've missed sunrise for sure. That would have been a beautiful time because there was an orange glow also to the west of us this morning. Um, and that would have been just beautiful as a backdrop uh, to the island. However, we do have what's left of the snow on the ski hills way, way, way in the distance. Um, Blue Mountain, Collingwood, Ontario, those areas. Is that something we can incorporate into that uh, particular image or into that story? Again, until we actually get there and take a look at the composition, I don't know. But as we make our way there, we're definitely planning um, the composition. Uh, we're planning the shoot. We're planning what it is we'd like to see. Hey, all part of the day's uh, activity, all part of the day's adventure. Um, thinking about what we want to come away with. Once we get these images in Lightroom, what are we expecting to see? What would we like to see? What do we want to create? Okay, having said that, these are the downsides of the morning. It's later, as I've mentioned, that I wanted it to be. It's very, very bright already. Um, and right now, it's just approaching 7 a.m. I would have liked to have been here at 6 a.m. Uh, but again, so be it. So yeah, <laughs> now, the weatherman does say that tonight, a system, a warm front, I believe it is, is going to move through the area and it's gonna bring a calm, steady rain. And that rain is gonna be with us tomorrow morning with calm conditions. And that would also be a very, very interesting time uh, to shoot uh, this particular scene. And you know what? I think I just went past an area that I wanted to look at. So let me just turn around because I think bubbling on here made me miss something that I wanted to see. Um, because even though I have been here before, a couple of weeks ago and I was on my bike, um, cause I was out, I've been doing a lot of road kind of bike riding lately, um, which just kind of helps me training for the long distance hikes that I do. Um, but with, you know, the craziness that's going on in the world right now, <clears throat> the only work I've had of any kind uh, has been my photography work. Hence, a lot of time hiking, a lot of time bike riding. Okay, let's just mosey down here because this very well could be the first location that we want to shoot. However, I cannot be 100% sure that that's the case. Let me go take a look. So as we just make our way down to the water from where I just parked my car, uh, just behind us, it's only a few hundred yards. Um, and again, I'm just not sure if this was the location where I actually saw the larger of the two islands. Um, and I'd actually done it just by taking a little break. It was a long 80 to 100 kilometer ride. So I was getting a little tired and I thought a little break here would be nice. Um, but I'm just not sure if this was the location. I'm kind of thinking it wasn't now, but, you know, I really should have marked them with a GPS marker. But anyhow, we will definitely find the location. <laughs> so unprepared as far as <laughs> was it or wasn't it. But it does give us the opportunity to take a look at the water which is super, super calm. From this particular point, I'm not sure if you can see this in the GoPro, but I can see the island, uh, sorry, I can see the ski hills ahead of me. 
uh, with the remnants of the, the snow on the hills. Um, yeah. So this is definitely not the first location that I wanted to shoot from. So it's still further up the shoreline a ways, but I don't think it's that far up the shoreline. Okay. Beautiful little spot, but this is definitely not the location that I wanted to start at this morning. So let's just head back just to where I parked my car and let's continue just a little bit further north because we'll definitely find the area but I'm just uh, should have paid more attention at the time okay let's keep going let's see what we can find here now just ahead of me here is another area where we can access along the beach and the shoreline of the lake uh, by the way, this is Georgian Bay, which is part of Lake Huron uh, and the Great Lakes here in Ontario. Uh, but anyhow, let's just take a look down here because I'm really believing that this was the location of the largest of the two islands. Um, and that's the one I did want to shoot first because of its orientation uh, with the sun um, behind it. Um, and I, I didn't want to be shooting directly in the sun, so I wanted to time it so I wouldn't be doing that. And I think... I do believe this is the right location, but we will soon see. Okay, let's go down and take a look. Okay, there is our first island. Now, this is actually the largest of the two islands today. Uh, there's a small boathouse, well, actually quite a large boathouse, um, on the eastern side of the island. We're looking at the northern side as we're looking or facing south. Okay, absolutely beautiful, stunning morning. The composition wow. right this moment. The island, the sun is directly to my left, right at 90 degrees. We have applied a polarizer to the lens. What does that mean? Well, just take a look. Right now, with the sun, and I'm not sure if we're going to see this in this screen or not, but let's just try it and see. If I rotate the polarizer, it gets bright and dark. Maximum polarization is available to us because the sun is directly above the trees, 90 degrees to my shooting location. Sure, that could create a lot of uh, sun flares across the lens and we're gonna try to cover the lens from that and protect the lens from those rays of light. But we didn't really see it that well, simply because my GoPro, for whatever reason, quite often does not pick up uh, the LCD screen on the camera very well, the colors and the light and so on. But we are realizing maximum polarization, and it's really dramatic. We drop probably, oh my goodness, normally we save things like two stops of light with maximum polarization this morning with the conditions and the light being where it is in the sun position, 90 degrees directly to the camera lens, I'm guessing I'm dropping the, uh, well, I know I am, uh, from my light meter, I'm dropping the light by as much as four stops of light this morning, simply by using maximum polarization. So, hey, really, really, really quite interesting. First composition, minimalistic, negative space, one shot, islands on my left, uh, at the bottom third, a lot of blue sky and a lot of clear lake. Now, <clears throat> that was 1 40th of a second. I do want to slow it down a little bit more than that. And so to do that, I'm going to apply an ND filter. Let's have a look in the kit bag. Let's see what we've got with us today. And let's see if we can slow things down a little more. What I'm looking at is somewhere around, oh, maybe three quarters of a second, maybe one second in time. A lot of glare on that water. Hopefully, the polarizer will take care of that for us. Let's apply an ND filter. Let's see. Okay, so now, in addition to the polarizer, we have our ND filter 
uh, which is this is a 0.6 ND filter and it's now giving us around one eighth of a second let me just take one shot now keeping in mind now the Sun is directly 90 degrees to the lens there's a little fence here I'm gonna hop over this little fence uh, and I'm going to come around to the <laughs> far side of the camera and I I'm going to block right there maybe you can see my shadow on the camera as we darken that there right there we are blocking right now or at least attempting to block that sunlight that will hopefully eliminate any sunspots or sun flares across that image or across the lens so yeah first image of the day okay back over the fence we go Whew. beautiful little location um, and again I really really wish I'd have got here just oh 45 minutes earlier but it just wasn't going to happen today I'm afraid oh well Wow. Let me try something else. On this Fujifilm camera, we can change. Actually, let's go back a minute. Uh, okay, fine. We can change the film simulation. We've talked about this before. This is our Velvia setting, which gives us a vivid. Let's just try one shot at that. Provia. Hmm, interesting. One shot. Don't know how those sun flares are doing because we're doing nothing at all right now to uh, block the sun, which I really need to be. So let me see what I've got in my kit bag here. I've just got a little bit of something. In fact, maybe even, maybe even just this little pouch from my ND filter could actually work right there. To block the sun and it would okay huh just don't have enough hands this morning okay don't have enough hands <laughs> stand by let me see if I can find a spot to put you guys okay let's try this I hope I hope you guys can see me okay in the camera. <laughs> Again, tripod camera, ND filter, sunshine. And we are trying to block that sunshine. I can see the brightness right here on the left side of the camera. And when I move this little ND filter pouch over, I can see the shadow go past and over the camera. There we're protecting it from the sun flares. And there's my shot. Let's try that one more time. We have one eighth of a second. Hmm. You know what? Whoops. Moving things around. Not exactly as slow as I would have liked, but just super bright right now. Just take that out a little bit. There we go. Okay, I just got to make an adjustment here. Wow. And let me try this particular shot here again. One eighth of a second, ISO 200. <laughs> Polarizer set to maximum polarization, 1.6 ND filter, and F22. Am I worried about distortion? Yes, but F22 on this type of an image will be okay and it really gives me that tiny tiny aperture and it helps me slow down the shutter speed a little bit more or a lot more okay and yet another shot okay no idea um, what we're getting out of that and how that is going to uh, play out this morning again the conditions are just not right really even though 
yes it's calm and that's what i wanted but the sunshine is super bright again i keep saying this and i've said it since i got in the car this morning i was simply 30 45 minutes maybe an hour behind schedule um you know and that's my bad and there's a lesson listen if you want to be a landscape photographer make the time get out of bed <laughs> do your planning um, sure you can get here and now a late and the shot could be lost forever so there's lots of things to think about however I'm really really liking what I've got here also and I'm going to enjoy working with it in Lightroom yeah now let us try an image in a vertical or portrait orientation. I got to be a little bit careful too because what I noticed was there's a big sign right there and they're backing right up towards me but that's the garbage collector. <laughs> there's a big sign right there that says no parking and I'm parked right there. So I want to be a little bit careful, but I can't see my car. Okay, boom. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Wow, indeed. Just bring that back in a little bit, I think. Yeah. Electronic zoom on this 15 to 45 mil Fuji lens. Just take a little bit of getting used to, but you know what? what are we getting here? Beautiful. Love that. Okay, vertical orientation. Again, let's try to block that sunlight. Let's put this camera in shadow. There it is, or the lens in shadow. And let's take the shot awesome again ISO 200 20 uh, f22 one eighth of a second one more shot Wow there we go first location is in the bag and I'm liking what we're getting so far okay yeah I'm gonna pack up from here we're gonna jump back in the car we're going to head actually back down a little bit the shoreline uh, just a kilometer or two back down to the location where I wanted to shoot that second island now all things being equal and all things being right the Sun's going to be in a much better position this is why I wanted to shoot the larger island first because I knew the Sun would be uh, in, a, in a bad position for what I wanted to do right now although you know what if I could actually get if I could actually get far enough over this fence because I do believe it's private property on the far side of the fence where we were stood there um I could get myself back in the shade there but I'd be on somebody else's property to do that and I just don't want to do that right now okay tomorrow's another day and we can come back as many times as we want but let's pack up from here and let's go to our next location beautiful okay I love bright sunshine, but it's just not my friend when it comes to photography. Okay, that's fine. Next location. Better take you guys with me. Back down by the shoreline second location if we can see this in the GoPro uh, the small island way 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 out there tiny little island 
That is our second location. Hey, the water crystal, crystal clear. Take a little look down there. Absolutely beautiful. Super cold. Uh, just a very, very, very short while ago. This was all frozen, but absolutely beautiful. Hey, now in this particular lo location, totally different uh, sun position. The sun will be directly behind us. Um, so it's 90 degrees um, from the last position of the last shoot. Uh, that's going to make changes as far as polarization is concerned. Of course, I'm sure we all know to get maximum polarization, uh, the sun being at 90 degrees to the lens, lens will do that for us. Minimal polarization, the sun being uh, directly ahead or behind um, the actual lens. And in this case, directly behind the lens. However, the polarizer will still help to reduce glare. It simply won't reduce the amount of light um, by the two stops or whatever it may be uh, that, uh, that we would normally achieve if we were at 90 degrees uh, to the sun or if the lens was at 90 degrees to the sun. Anyhow, having said that and babbling on, let's get some gear. Let's head back down there. Let's pick a composition. This time I'm looking at the island, possibly with the ski hills behind way in the distance. Let's get our gear out of my little car, my little Chevy Spark. Yeah. Okay. Camera bag, tripod. And I believe we're okay to park here at this time now. Um, at this time of year, anyhow, in another three weeks, uh, the tourist season starts here. May the 15th, or after May the 15th, there's no parking without a permit. And I don't have a, a permit. I'm not a resident of this particular municipality. Um, and where the tourist season will start this year, who knows? It's a crazy, crazy year. Okay. Back to the water we go. Ski hills way, way, way in the distance. Super calm water, super bright. Not a cloud in the sky. Uh, so again, the type of image that we can search for or hope for today would be a minimalistic image um, and, and a display of negative space. And that is indeed the kind of image that we can go for today. And they can be quite attractive images. Um, I actually enjoy a negative space uh, photography. I really do. Um, Beautiful shoreline along here. Let's just move up the shoreline a little bit. Put ourselves in a position that may show the ski hills in the distance behind us. Way, way, way over there. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay, we're sat back up on the tripod. Sun's directly in my face. <laughs> directly behind the camera. The composition that we see, the island way, way, way in the distance, uh, very, again, minimalistic. It will be a good example of negative space. Minimum effect, minimum, minimal effect with the polarizer, with the sun directly behind the lens. Um, absolutely a very, very small amount of, of light reduction with maximum polarization, but I do believe it will still help reduce any glare on the water. Although again, with the sun directly behind me, the glare is also at a minimum. So that in itself may work. We have the uh, 0.6 ND filter on there. We have one image. We have the island in the left uh, bottom corner of that image. The problem I'm having, I'm using my kit lens, which is a 15 to 45 mil uh, Fujifilm lens. 
and the electronic zoom and it does take a little bit of getting used to the does the electronic zoom but i actually like very much the 15 to 45 mil i like the focal length but in this particular case it's simply not long enough i do have a 50 to 230 however what i do not have for that 15 to 230 is a bracket that's going to allow me to mount actually a, a, a ring a reduction ring or an expansion ring in this case that's going to allow me to mount my ND filter bracket it's mounted right now on my kit lens my 15 to 45 which has a 52 mil internal thread the internal thread of the lens of my 50 to 230 is 55 mil and I do not have a ring for that I do have one ordered it has not arrived yet um, because there's so many stores closed um, everybody's ordering everything online me too by the way I'm getting some great deals on some great items especially for my hiking uh, hiking shoes and so on and hiking gear greatly reduced prices um, because of just shopping online but um, everything's taken a lot longer to get here and what should have been here one two three weeks ago still has not arrived we'll be here any day and my ring uh, or my expansion ring or sorry my reduction ring in this case no correction my expansion ring on this in this case a uh, step up going from 52 to 55 mil has simply not arrived yet blah, blah. that was a mouthful okay so what can I do I want a longer focal length in my kit bag I have my Canon 50D and I have my 24 to 70 mil lens so my 24 to 70 mil lens that's 70 mil a 1.6 conversion factor that's going to give me somewhere around 105 mil well definitely not the 230 that i would be getting actually the 315 when i take the 1.5 conversion factor into account of my fuji phone but it's still significantly longer than i've got right now so we're going to reset up with the canon 50d and my 24 to 70 mil lens we're going to see what we can do with that stand by. okay we're set up on the tripod the canon 50d the 24 to 70 mil lens uh polarizer the 0.6 nd filter and also a four stop soft edge graduated filter the combination is giving me one third of a second iso 100 f22 again same as my last shot am i worried about um distortion at f22 you know what i'm not why hey take a look at the scene tell me out there what is there to distort absolutely nothing a very 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 as i keep saying minimalistic negative space image but it can be quite interesting let's take that shot awesome okay let us try let us try so that's going okay sorry little bit of finger problems here but that's okay let us try we go here Now, something I didn't notice because it's something I don't use and I just don't um, for whatever reason. I shoot 100% of the time on manual and for some reason I'd set my, by accident I guess, I'd set my uh, camera to aperture priority which is fine. And I kept wondering in my mind why does it keep going back to f4, f4, f4 because that's where I'd set my aperture priority for by accident. Didn't mean to do that. Um, so now I have things under better control because it took me a moment to figure out why it was doing that Then I realized hey, I'm not in my manual mode that I am in 100% of the time Having said that the f22 can now drop down to Well, let's see Let's go to f16 ISO 100 let me just take a little look inside and see so if i go to the f16 actually you know what 
still not going to shut it slow it down enough for me so let's go back to the f22 there we go f22 okay so at f22 iso 100 70 mil focal length polarization polarizer set to maximum polarization which is minimal because the sun's directly behind me but it is making some effect and it will help reduce the glare the 0.6 nd filter the four stop soft edge grad graduated filter one third of a second and there is my image did we get anything out of that i've no idea until we get it back to lightroom there was a lot of kind of babbling going on and a lot of thinking and a lot of kind of planning as we went along um but hey it's a thought process it's my thought thought process when i set up on at a location and i get my camera on the tripod and i'm planning in my mind what i'm going to do and how i'm going to do it how am i going to slow down the shutter speed how am i going to reduce the amount of light uh, that my sensor is exposed to how am i going to make the water nice and silky but not make it just blown out white lots and lots of things to think about how am i going to make the shot with the tools that i have as i mentioned i'm still waiting for a step down a step up ring from a 52 to 55 mil so i can use my fujifilm and my fujifilm long lens with an nd filter hey that's a mouthful right there wow confuses the hell out of me but the image is in the bag it's a beautiful 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 location um and to the right of the island or between me and the island and just further along the beach is an area where there's a couple of um, i believe seagulls on small rocks i have no idea if i can incorporate that into an image but i'm certainly going to try let's head up that way let's see if we can do that okay just walking along uh the shoreline the beach for two or three hundred yards gives me a significantly different composition insofar as and i don't believe you're going to see this in the gopro but insofar as to the right of the island and between me and the island is a couple of small rocks just barely protruding out of the lake or out of the water and a couple of um waterfowl i believe seagulls maybe i don't know loons i can't tell from here um but that is incorporated into my image exactly the same setup as before and my process is to focus my camera on the island then using automatic focus then turning to manual focus change the composition to what it is i want which i've done and there is that one shot so just a little tip or just a little technique that i've used right here and i use many times I don't want the camera pointing directly at the island. There's nothing around the island for the camera to focus on. So I'll focus the lens, the camera, on the island, and then I'll turn uh, the focus to a manual focus. I'll use automatic focus for the focusing. Then, once I've done that, I can now change my composition. I can point the camera, point the lens anywhere I want. In that direction, of course. But the, uh, this kind of negative space scene and the island will be in focus theoretically it should be and that's um, the procedure we used right there so yeah amazing 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 location today and i am having so much fun doing this now a blue blue sky like this is not necessarily in fact it's very rarely what i look for except for today this minimalistic kind of uh, shot perfect with a blue sky okay i'm going to move just a little bit more up the shoreline and try one more composition let's just pick up the tripod let's just move up here a little bit you see as i'm moving as i'm moving uh, the location of the birds and those rocks is changing it's changing it's changing 
Now, they just slightly out of being in line with the island. Hey, what do we have here? You know what? One more image, one more shot. Everything's equal, everything's the same. Just change that slightly. And again, yeah, that's even more interesting. Wow. Yeah, as I've said, totally loving the location. The sun is beautiful and it's just starting to warm up a little bit, but not much. My fingers are still very cold, but I just didn't need gloves this morning. And here we are around April the 25th, the 26th, uh, it's spring. Still chilly mornings. Today's high, it's gonna be around, I think 10 degrees Celsius. So what would that be? 20, 30, somewhere around maybe, I don't know, would that be 50 degrees Fahrenheit maybe? I don't know. Okay, let's pack up from here. Um, am I going to go to the woods today, to the forest that we'd mentioned earlier? You know what? I am thinking not. Uh, because I would really, really, really like to shoot that on a little bit more of a grayer, grayer day. I'd like to control the light a little bit more. Right now we're going to have a bright light on the... Uh, kind of penetrating in areas of that particular forest um, and I don't think that's what I'm looking for in that image I'm thinking I'm looking more of a gray moody kind of woodland shot with these ice age kind of almost prehistoric looking kind of boulders Jurassic boulders if you will in that forest with the moss um, and a little bit maybe of mist and gray and, and wet and rain and that's not today. Hey, let's pack up our camera. Let's head back to the studio. Let's make a cup of coffee. And let's have a look at some images from today. We'll talk to you next time. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, I forgot. If you like what we're doing, please tell me. Say, hey, click. I like that. Leave a comment, share, and please subscribe. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.